Hello, welcome back for another Maps episode. Maps with Trek. The sound is not too great today. I don't have my mixer. I don't have my, I don't have my microphone today. Um, so apologies for that. But frankly, it doesn't matter because what we're about to do is kind of only tangentially uh, about sound. You can play some music in your background if you like. Um, I said that like I was actually ready. I still need one more USB cable. I will, uh, I will look in the box. I will say, if anybody is in the market for a Moog Prodigy, I am trying to sell mine currently. I think I think nine hundred dollars is a is a bargain price, so that's what it is. They seem like they're going for like eleven hundred online. Um, is this not the right connection? Come on, all right. Power. Away. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so today, what I'm hoping to get back into is something we've been kind of on and off looking at uh, over the last, um, yeah, over the last like six weeks or so. Um, obviously, I wasn't here last week, I just, you know, needed some time to myself. Um, but it's this idea of what was originally just like a, an attempt to capture the uh, the kind of this particular kind of note sequencing that I was pretty much writing out every time I did one of the streams early on. You know, there's always this idea of like creating a scale and then creating a system that uh, indexes into it and then being able to move through that scale. Um, Scale's the wrong word. Uh, note sequence, you know? O often they were arpeggios or scales, but the idea was simply to say, here's a bundle of notes, and then just use them as a list and cycle through. Um, so, what I started trying to do was kind of abstract that concept into a what could become a library, um, because it seemed silly to be writing it every time. Um, that's kind of the... I guess that's the programmer's mindset that made me go down that path. Um, it felt pretty relevant, I guess. Uh, is that the right word? Well, it, it just feels like something that might be interesting and useful to other people in order to write uh, more... Not necessarily more expressive, but be able to articulate these kinds of ideas, which I think are pretty... Uh, normal um, and have a simple declarative way to talk about them without having to worry about the mechanism of moving through the steps uh, from a computational perspective. You just have to think, I have this bundle of notes, this bundle of values even, they don't have to be notes. Um, and I want a system that will kind of give me a new note every time I ask for one, and it will handle the kind of uh, the behavior of moving through or backwards or chunking around uh, internally. It also means you can like share the same sequence, I think. Um, yeah, you could share the sequence across multiple different things that all pull a note from it, and everyone will get a an independent note. It will get its own note. Um, cool. Okay, so the first question is, where do we find it? <laughs> um, no. Let's see if we have access to norms. Fingers crossed. Yeah. 
Looks good. So, what is Gemini dot Lua? Why is it called this? <laughs> No idea. Which one is... What am I actually... I don't even know if we had it in here. We were just working in Sublime, right? Yes, indeed. Alright, that's good. That means I can just copy and paste it. What a joy. Um, does it make sense to, to use that old directory? I don't know. Let's try it out. I'm just going to make a new file so we can start working on a... Oh, Sublime came back. We, have, we can see that. I'm just going to turn that off. Um, but yeah, that, that's ba this is basically the whole thing that we were working through, and um, yeah, maybe we'll just do a quick recap, mostly for my own sake, <laughs> um, because I, I remember it loosely, but I haven't touched it since then. Um, I'm really, okay, I want to go one more step about why I'm bothering to pursue this. I, I think this concept could be really cool for um, a hardware interface. Um, basically having a, a physical sequencer, whether that's using a MIDI controller or using NONS or something like this. Um, but to have some kind of hands-on uh, control over these structures. So all you need is like an interface to create your pool of notes. Um, you're like, a ta it's a Lua table, but like basically the collection of notes um, that are in order. Um, and then you need something to for each for each collection. Maybe the collections are separate, but um, then you, you just for each uh, sequence sequence that you make, you just need a behavior to be assigned for it. And and then you can get into the fun like, well, how do they nest together and how do they interact? Uh, and I think that it could be a really good uh, yeah, it could be a fun interface to play with. So I don't know that we'll get all that way today, but um, we're certainly going to try and do something. Um, okay, so I like really got into some, maybe I will turn this back on. Um, cool, uh, so we can, um, let's just go through this. A demo of Nons Clock Library. This is certainly not that anymore. Um, so we have this concept, like this idea that we have these tables that we're listing out, um, which, you know, denote scales in the context we've been working in, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Um, I, I think this could also be really fun to, to use for, um, just like parameter sequencing. Um, yeah, I think that would be fun. Um, okay, so we, this is the bit that's really interesting to us, right? So we have this function, which is run arm, and this seems to be, this is basically a it's a function that places whatever is inside of it in time. So um, basically, this is just some kind of infrastructure to allow us to take this, this sequencing approach um, and give it a time base so that we can kind of hear notes rolling by as we use it. Um, so I think, I'm just trying to think about uh, how we can get it running on, on norms as quickly as possible. And to do that, we're definitely going to need this function. All right. Um, uh, it's not even an outcrow. Do I have a... 
I'm, I'm just too curious what this is. Okay. Uh, we need a new folder. Where did that get put? Did it get put in here? I all right, let's just make another one. Here we need a file. All right, man, this is going to be um, sequence. Demonstration. Oh, you can't see this, sorry. Um, I will not, I will not linger there. Let's go back. Okay. Uh, so this initialization function, I think is interesting. We're going to massively simplify it though. Um, I should do that here so you can see what's going on. Oh, we can come back. Cool. I drank a lot of coffee right before we started this. So I'm feeling a little, uh, like that. Cool. Okay. So, um, this is when it gets interesting, right? We have this function that we're calling make sequence, and I think we proposed that uh, it would be called something different um, down here somewhere. Yeah, we said this would be sequence.new. Um, and you know what? We're going to start. We're, we're going to build this library in here first. Um, I'm just going to build it basically. Uh, I'm going to append it just at the end of the, um, the non-script that I'm kind of putting together, throwing together in the background. Um, but it's essentially working the same way. We're just like, the only difference is we're giving these functions, uh, we're giving them like a namespace. Uh, so let's go back up grab that make sequence. So this function, we're going to keep it exactly as it is. All we're going to do is rename it to uh, sequence.new. And so as long as you have a table, Part of the problem is I haven't actually used Maiden very much, the uh, the non-scripting platform. So I'm a little, I don't know that necessarily I'm pressing the right keys and buttons. All right, so we are calling that SKN, but we want to rename it. Okay. Um, I mean, we already had this working, right? So. Today is not really going to be about just getting it to work. Oh, that was a fun thing. Well, that's for another time. Um, today, what I want to kind of talk about is what we, I think, started touching on the last time I was talking about this, which is how to go, how to have um, lower levels in a structure uh, affect the ones that are above them. So typically, when you build a structure, um, and I mean, this is kind of echoed in the, uh, the corporate world, is like management comes from the top down, right? And like often it's bad because of that, because it's, uh, it doesn't have context um, for what is happening on the ground. Um, so we want to be able to add uh, We want to be able to add the ability for layers that aren't the top layer to be able to communicate back up. Um, so if we look at this little chunk right here, 
we had created this concept of every, um, which is described up here, right? Skip this value unless it's the end call. Meaning, every time I call every, <laughs> sorry, um, each time I call every, I'm going, I am maybe going to return a value or maybe going to skip myself. Um, so in order to do that, in order to like skip in a way that doesn't just like return a, a nothing value, I have to tell the person that asked me for something, I can't give you one, you'll have to ask the next person. So that's what I think is the, the first kind of big challenge that we have to get through today. Um, and I think that that's kind of like the main thing. I want to be able to have, like it's not, that's not the whole library, but I think that's fundamentally, it, it kind of implements the two things we need. One is the ability to have a behavior that sequences through a list, um, are three things. One, okay, so there's that ability to sequence a list. We need to be able to nest that sequence so that um, so that we can kind of compose different structures and ideas. Um, and and we need to be able and we need to be able to have elements that are being called communicate back up and uh, change the control flow of the sequence. Okay, uh, that was a lot of words, but I think uh, I think I know what I'm trying to do now. So hopefully, um, you know, hopefully it's not going to be super boring. Uh, but we'll we'll do our best to make it work. All right, this looks good. I think this is maybe incomplete. All right, I'll turn off the. Yeah, nice to see all the friendly faces in the chat. Hello. Okay. Um, cool. So, um, where to begin? I guess the first question is, how are we going to, how are we going to know if this is working? I think that's like, the first uh, question. And so maybe the, what we should do is set up like a test case um, or just a sound generation. And how do I do that? A speaker. <laughs> Once we get this working, it's definitely going to make the uh, audio really choppy, but uh, we'll try to use it sparingly so that doesn't make too much of an issue. Um, hey, which, which jack is which? <laughs> I like, literally don't remember. Is that, is that output? If anybody can tell me uh, which jack it should be. Have I got it wrong? Headphone out, out left. Okay, so I think I'm right, yeah? Or are you going from right to left? From left to right. Okay, yes, out but left. Sounds good. Cool. So we should have um, battery high. Battery's high. Connect with Jim. Right, Connect so with Jim. Double let's down. just,
Why don't I have sound? Can you tell that I've like barely used this device? Just leave this, leave this until I actually have something to say. <laughs> cool.
I'm not sure how much you can hear of me, but uh, I'm just, uh, we're using Awake right now, the sequence, so I'm just uh, going through to basically copy and paste how it is generating notes. Cool. 
Oh, come on, let me scroll. At 13, I can't find it. Maybe it was just global. Let's fix that. Okay, now we have a clock error. This is my solution that I can't make the text smaller, so I can just do it like this. Attempt to get length of a nil value vowels at 56. But it's here. Oh. Try that. Cool. I love. Uh, one of my favorite things about programming is um, the conversation with the compiler or the like, you know, the error system. To me, it's like, oh, it's because I just left all this in here. I can see that the camera's not picking it up, it's because the notes are too low in frequency. But there is sound. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we need to add some add something. Cool. So uh V equals V plus what's a good number? 60? 48? Cool. So that's um where we're running it. We're running a sequence. Still don't know about how to how to talk about that word. Um sequence, sequence, sequence. It uh 
it's a little challenging, but we'll figure it out. I believe in that. So currently we're playing through this table here. Um, this table is basically being used to, it's like, it's the, it's the scale. And then we're just creating a sequence in here. Um, and we're using the next behavior. So we can change that to previous and this will flip it. So the, the notes will start falling down instead. Subdivisions of time. Um, uh, there's lots of ideas. Um, I think the trick here is I'm deliberately not addressing time. I'm deliberately saying like a sequence is going to only only give you uh, value data and then it's up to you to place it in time. So currently I'm, I made this run up function, you know, so it, it's the run up function that is kind of fixed, right? Like it just takes a single value as the sync, uh, the sync amount. Yeah. Um, whereas I think you could, um, you know, you can make a much more complicated version of run up. I think that would be a, that would be a good solution. I like, I, I think from the beginning, I've been really excited about separating notes from rhythm. And I think that that's actually one of the things that modular is like really cool for. And it's one of the things when you first use a modular synth, it's, it's confusing, right? Because you, you have like independent control of pitch and amplitude. Whereas, at least for me, I've never experienced a, um, I guess the closest thing I'd experienced to that was like playing a saxophone, right? Where the articulation is, is your mouth, like is your air, the amplitude. Um, whereas the pitch is your fingers and they're separate, you know, and like, they work independently, but yeah, it's like, it's funny to have them be incredibly explicit. Like we're going, we're completely, we're making a point not to talk about rhythm, right? Cause I want to do rhythm, but I want to like, I feel like it's easy to talk about it when I'm not also talking about pitch. So that's the concept and uh, hopefully it continues to make sense. Maybe we can. So we have a really basic sequence here. Um, all it does is take this scale and process through it. The first thing you want to be able to do is nest it. Um, and I think it's already supported. I'm just going to jump back to the sublime and, and check out how it works. I should just be able to have a sequence. Oh, an element of a sequence can be another sequence. Thank you. 
I think this is just gonna like weave them together. Let's see if it works. No, it does not. What's up? Oh. Need one of those. Well, clearly this is not correct. I'm gonna try and figure out which note it's playing. Okay, so to me that it was the one that went up in pitch, so it must be Lydia. So apparently the sequence is getting into Lid, but it's never progressing beyond that first stage. Probably something to do with generating Sequence is no longer in existence. It should be sequenced on you. Well, that was true, but it didn't fix the problem. <laughs> cool, okay, what's up? So the sequence is going to return a function. Um, which is just going to increment the index, it'll wrap the index, that's all fine. The value is going to grab the first thing out of it, it's going to find another sequence. So it's going to ask if that type is a function, which it will be for a sequence. Um, we then process that function, we call it. Otherwise, we're going to skip. And then we return v, which is basically the, the inner value of that. So let's put a print in here and find out if it's happening. So. <laughs> What's the shortcut for run? P? Yeah, okay. P. Here we are. Um, okay, it's returning the number zero. And why is that? Thank you. 
think what's happening is the, the index is not, uh, it's not being captured each time. So maybe we're doing something wrong. So this, this function is fancy because it creates a closure. Um, and we have this value, we're using, we create this val, uh, parameter, parameter, uh, variable. Um, called x, and it seems like x is being shared, which seems like the wrong thing, absolutely. Um, I never, I'm always a little curious about how this works. Do I need to put it in here? Something like that. That certainly changed things. feels like it's to do with the index, but um, I don't know why. Thank you. 
Oh, okay. Wait, no. <laughs> Alright. Can I just turn it off by doing that? Oop, okay, so um, we've got these error messages, which hopefully will give us some insight. It's basically the same thing happening again and again. This cycle. So, what that's saying is, I'm not sure which one happens first, unfortunately, but we should be able to figure it out. Um, if we look at our structure, um, basically, run up is going to, in the clock, it's going to run this function forever, where we'll sync to the clock and then it will call first argument with the result of calling its second argument as the variable. So the first argument is play note. So we're going to play note with the result of calling whatever sequence new gave us. So sequence new is obviously giving us a function. Um, and it is that outer wrapping function that's going to be called. Um, which is good. That's great. Um, oh, okay. This makes sense, right? So what's happening is uh, down in sequence new, We're using this x parameter, short for index. It really is just like the, it's the, the counter of what state, what stage we're up to within the context of the, um, of the table that we gave it at initialization. Um, now, the reason I know that it's using the same it's using a, it's using the same variable what we want is for each new sequence new sequence to have its own index because we want to be able to maintain the state of each uh, sequence independently uh, and the reason we can tell that it is not doing that is it's when we put um, When we change this behavior to be random or drunk, uh, it works fine, right? It um, seemingly, but it always works on the same step, um, on the same uh, subsequence, uh, and that is because next is kind of changing. It's changing which element in the table we're looking at, and this out this outer sequence only has two elements in its table. It has the first sequence function and the second sequence function. So when we say next here, it's always going to set the index to two. Um, uh, something like that. Meanwhile, if we set these to be previous or next, it's always going to return the same value one direction away from the initial point. So it's always calling 12 when we set it to previous, which is kind of going from one and stepping one back. Um, whereas if we change it to next, it changes the note, but it still stays on that note. So that's our issue, I believe. Now the question is, how do we solve it? Um, this doesn't work. This is not what we need. Um, I'm going to try this.
Oh, did I? Oh, oops. Sorry. Um, no, that's correct. Did I not? This. Oh, I probably left these in here. Yeah. Don't let it. Cool. needed to make this uh, local. Alright, so apologies for that very long detour. Cool, um, this makes sense, right? When, so previously, I had, previously this was just x equals 1, and so what that was doing is creating a global variable called x. Um, so there can only be one global variable called x, and so every time we changed it, we were overriding that global. Whereas when we make it local to this call of sequence.new, it means that every time we call sequence.new, we're going to create a new instance of this variable x, and they're all going to be independent. And when we get, normally, when we get to the end of this function, it would throw that variable away, but it doesn't because it has captured it inside of this function. And so that's what we call a closure. It's like close the x into itself. I know that's not where the name comes from. But yeah, it's basically capture the thing. It says, no, you're, you're with me. Uh, I'm going to carry you around. Um, and in a way, that means nobody else can touch it either. Um, but each one gets its own. This is great. What's interleaving the two uh, the two scales? One note each at a time. So let's go one step further. Let's uh let's get this every idea working. Um, let's go back to sublime. Oh no, we already have it at the bottom. Uh, why don't we stop? Break, take a break. 45 seconds, one minute. Stretch your legs. I'm just going to remove some of these prints that we added to debug that.
Is this really that eternal? To me, it sounds really good. Part of me is like, yeah, but most people would think it sounds awful. But I like it. To me, it's like harmonic. Basically, I've got like, I think we want to do the every function, and then I think we should just go straight to making a UI for nons. We've only got 40 minutes, so that feels like a, a solid start to making this thing work and to like having a performance interface so we can actually use it, right? One of the issues with making a UI is we're going to have, uh, we have to figure out this problem, right? So currently, uh, when we call sequence.new, it takes whatever this table is, this, so here we're using dim, now a dim and lib, diminished and libian, uh, and, and these behaviors, and it's capturing them and it's, it's basically freezing them. Um, it's taking a copy. And I think what we really want is we want to be able to pass in this scale and continue to reference it um, so that we can change that scale. Right? So, I mean, this is all well and good. This is nice. It's like we can write cool sequences, but we can't change them on the fly. So I think that, I don't know that we'll get that done today, but we can at least get it to the point where uh, you can like change some parameters and restart it. Okay, so let's make these. I'm gonna make a new scale. Ah, uh, gonna make a new one called base. Just going to be three notes. Three. Is that the English way? I don't know. Anybody who's seen that Tarantino movie? Oh my god. Um. Three notes, but because they're bass notes, I don't want them to happen all the time. I want them to kind of like drive drive tonality in a slower kind of time time scale. So the goal is I'm gonna switch dim to be bass. Um it's still gonna play next, but instead of it being every instead of it being like each time, we're gonna we're gonna use this uh, every behavior. I feel like directly I uh, captured that locally. I think all we have to do 
let's say sequence of every, and say how often. So let's say every fourth time it's called. We'll work on the syntax a bit so that it's briefer uh, in a moment. Let's just see if it works. I know I made that note that it was broken. Uh, this here. Um, So we have this issue, right, where the way we're implementing the, the every feature is where we're using a, a return value, right? So down here in every, this calculation here is the thing that says, is this the everyth call? If it is, meaning if e equals one, that actually could be if e is uh, I think one is correct. Um, that means it's the first. It's the first element, and then it will count up to everyth, and then it will go back to number one. Jump back. In the case that it is number one, it will simply call the contained sequence. Um, otherwise, it will return zero, uh, which is just a placeholder, and then it will return this string called skip. Um, we don't really need to do this with two values, we could just do it by saying if the return value is a string. Um, but there's nothing stopping, uh, there's nothing stopping sequence from sequencing strings. I know that seems strange, but imagine you wanted to sequence through a set of, uh, colors, you know, in a, in a visual synthesizer. Um, you could, rather than having the like encoded color, you could just have the name of the color. Well, it could be a thing that you could assign meaning to later. Um, I think a return value is nice. It kind of separates it out. It makes it not about not about matching on type, which we're already doing up here when we match on a function. Okay, so, um, the issue is, when it returns the, the second value as the skip, um, what we're doing is returning the result of calling this, can, this function out here, this sequence.new, and that's not correct. What we need to be calling is basically this function again. He's basically saying, I know we, like, yes, we've just run this function, but we need to do it again. Whimsical video said, yeah, I wish. Maybe one day. Programming for a... Uh, visuals I always find incredibly mind-bending. It's like writing a UI, it seems so simple, but I find it hard, so not anytime soon, but I love the idea. So, here's the problem, right? This function is an anonymous function, that's what they call it, a function without a name. So there's no way for me to write here the name of the function that I'm inside of. Even though truly what I want to do is recurse. I want to just call itself. Um, I don't know how to do it. Anonymous recursion.
So from that brief read of the introduction on a Wikipedia page, uh, it suggests that anonymous recursion is a bad idea, um, which I can see why they would say that. Um, and that it suggests that you should name the functions. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Cool. Okay, so this is actually makes it much clearer what's going on here. So currently what we return is directly this giant function. All we have to do is put this return down the bottom. Um, and we're going to make a local function called There we go. I think that should do it. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things, is uh, being really confident and then being very wrong. <laughs> Alright, what's the issue? Attempt to call a nil value of value seek at 35. Alright, so this returned a nil value. Why would that be? We didn't actually call a function. Okay, so uh, just to make that bit clear, we have to return, we're basically creating this local function called generate. And then we're just going to return it. Uh, because our goal is to deliver a function to the caller, not, a, not the result of the function. All right, and we're still saying skip is broken, but it's not. makes a, a four note pattern.
so much is that like there's a couple bits of like infrastructure here but like this is the whole this is it you know that's the composition everything else is just like infrastructure it's just a library um well that and and these two I want to really quickly make it do uh, repeats. I want basically a an element to be able to capture it. I know I was going to say I was meant to do a build a UI next, but uh, I think with those two different features, it really like um, it really can do so much. previous time, I just called it uh, count. And it's going to be remarkably similar to, to every, but it's going to operate in an inverse way. Okay, so, um, instead of skip, we're going to return again. is for next time. Then we're going to set the count to be count 
modular, fully modular account. Plus one. I'm guessing this is off by one, but I don't know right now. But we'll figure it out. If C equals one, sure. I don't know. We'll, we'll get there. Return the contained element. Otherwise, we return the contained element and we run it again. Next step. So we can do that in here by adding an else if. All we're going to do uh, we kind of need to know the previous index value. So everything up here is about creating a new index. So what we should do So I just make, made it so that uh, we're creating the, the index we're going to jump to, we just created it uh, temporarily in this local variable newix. Um, so that means we can still have access to the old x. So This is going to get a little messy, but I feel like it's... We'll just write it out explicitly, and then we maybe can see it generally. So, um, if we just pass through and it's normal, the, the last thing we need to do is update the actual index with the new index. That's like save the temporary variable into the permanent. Or the, the kind of uh, the stateful variable, the thing that exists outside of this function. Um, that's also going to need to happen. It also needs to happen when we do this. But I will know. Um, this doesn't matter if it's before, after recursion, um, because I think this might mean we can generalize it. That's just an intuition I have. Uh, the thing about, again, is we just don't do that. x equals x. x stays the same. don't have to call it again because we've actually we, we did get a value so all we do now is return b the 
this will stay the same because uh, we haven't actually used count yet. So let's try and do count and try and slice, splice it in here. Um, I'm not going to wrap it on every because I don't know how they'll interact. Not an error. Attempt to perform arithmetic on a function value, up value c. That's in count. Oh, we're passing in the arguments in the wrong order. This actually seems like it's not working, like it's doing, it's basically infinitely being stuck in the count. Okay, so we're close, but it's, uh, it's never releasing control. Oh, and I think it's because we're never actually matching this this here. Oh, well, it does match. And when it matches... Oh, okay, uh, here's the issue. Um, we actually need to say else x equals new x. So in case... In case it has called a, a nested function, and that nested function didn't return an extra argument, then we still need to increment the index. Okay, cool. So, what will... What I want to kind of make a note of here is this sounds identical, more or less, to, no, I think, I think it is identical, to putting an every count on the base channel, an every count of four. So every four is the same as, every four of A is the same as count four of B. So in a way, they kind of like are inverse of each other. Um, Which I think it just allows you to talk about things in both ways. It's like saying sometimes you want to talk about the case when something is true, and other times you want to talk about the case when things are false. Anyway, this is a. Uh, what's the word? Um. Academic <laughs> doesn't matter. Cool. So, how quickly can we make a UI? Let's. Why don't we just draw it on paper? That's more fun. The last time I played with this cable, I killed my computer, which I've tried to turn on, and while it turns on, it uh, becomes unresponsive. Bit. 
will post the gist after after the chat after the the Twitch gist. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of the um <laughs> of the application. My lines always look worse on the camera than in real life. So, what I want to be able to do is basically have like a, an elementary sequence, a basic sequence would have a set of squares, right? And in each square, you could have uh, a number. I think we could easily fit eight on the screen. Probably way more. Yeah, probably more like 12. Anyway, so this could be 1, 12, 48, whatever. It's a number. Um, coupled, so this is a table. Essentially what we're trying to do here is um, articulate or visualize some Lua data structures. So. So even better. Oh yeah, you can still hear that, nice. We want to articulate this, and we want to articulate these. So how about, I'm going to draw them bigger just to make it simpler to start. Um, so imagine these are scales, right? So say you want that Lydian, right? something like that. Um, that would be an element at the top of the screen here. Probably you want a couple of them to make it more interesting. Um, so maybe these are, maybe this is a whole page of just tables, right? And you give them names. So this is, it could either be named or it could just be like ABC. Um, figure that out. But the thing that's, I think, more challenging, rather than just these flat tables of notes or values, um, so obviously, sorry, the point is we can we can change these, we can shift them up and down by like selecting, say, oh, I want to select this value, it'll draw a heavy box around it, and then you can change it with an encoder. Um, but what we really, I think, need to look at, because it's more challenging, is, yeah, this section, where we say, s.new, which is going to take a table with, let's say, two arguments and a behavior. Question is, or, or the the reality, like the point is, this table can also contain references to this table and to this table, for example, right? Maybe it still also has numbers in here, but then again, this one's going to reference. So we have two data types. One is a value and one is a sequence. Wow, I drew that one backwards, that's funny. Um,
I mean not to me to change it. So this could be as simple as saying A, B. No, 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 no. If it's A, it's going to be A, behavior, B, behavior. Or it could just be... Okay, so... We have these couples, right? This is our... This is a sequence. It's a reference to a table, and it's a behavior. And these two are both editable. Need to be. Um, so we can change what table we're looking at and we can change what our behavior is. Now, the trick is that A might be a uh, it might be nested of these things. So we could draw it bigger, right? We could say Inside of A, this is almost it. But we haven't accounted for this every account functionality, and I think that that's, um, that's the challenge here. Well, that's what makes it special. Maybe what we need is, let's conceptualize it this way. So here we have our table choice. Um, up here we have our behavior. And beneath it we have uh, me is that it's actually up here with 
glues needs to get wrapped into a cell. Okay, I think this is not that hard, right? Because it's limited, we're working within a small context, right? We can redraw it. I think. So this is basically representing one of these. We can either have a value, so that's going to look like a number, or we can have a table. I think we would do that by basically saying, I don't know how I really articulate it, but essentially A a table name. And then beneath, um, we would use a one letter version of our behaviors, right? So this would be N. Next is previous, R is rand, and D is drunk. And then over here we have our modifier. And because currently all we have is, is two things, right? We have a count and we have an every. And they're inverse of each other, so we can represent them with inverse color. So, and it's always there, I think, right, because every one and count one are identical. So you could actually, it could be a single gesture to choose whether it's every or count, and basically negative numbers would go into every, and positive numbers go into count. Positive is um, count. Negative, i.e., uh, black and white is every. And then that's the whole thing, and we represent it with. Whatever takes. How big is that? How many can we realistically fit on the nonce system? Um, oh, it stopped. Uh, we could do a bunch on here, I think. And the cool thing then is like, it's just one page, right? The first page is just assigning, it's just nested. No, yeah, it's just nested. It's just nested. Let me attempt to draw it to you, and then we will end the stream. I think this could scroll vertically down, so you could make an infinite number of elements, and you could nest them arbitrarily deeply. I think that would be really, I think it could be really fun. Each one of these is one of these, or one of these, right? It's a, a cell, an atom. 
They need better names, obviously, but that's what these are. So we can say seven. We can say uh, a and two. We can say b p one, and then we can say the number nine again. Then beneath that. even better, so that it's not like an arbitrary number of tables. Basically, when you choose this value, currently we're just going to enter it in a number. What if you had a, if you push the button and then scroll the encoder, and that would choose like a, um, that would create a new table and give it a name, give it a letter, and it would just pop down beneath it. And then you, once you're editing it, and so basically you do that, and uh, that's what will create that next call, that next row. And then once you're in that row, you can add cells on the end with another gesture. So you can kind of keep this going arbitrarily long as far as you want. Then when we got to B, it would actually jump down to here. We might need a little bit of separation to make these work visually, but I think this concept works quite well. If you then added another cell here and referenced B with some behavior and number, it just wouldn't create another cell. It will just use that existing table. I think that's it. I might, uh, I'm gonna turn the stream off I feel like we got, we got to a good place today. But I think this idea is really interesting. I think it becomes like a... It's like matrix sequencing. Or something. I can't tell if it's... If I'm just convincing myself it's matrix-ish. Makes matrix-ish because of this representation, or if it actually is. Maybe it's more correct to say it is. Like, an, it's a nested sequencing, it's a tree sequencing concept. It's an idea. And I think that, uh, I guess that's what this stream is about, is coming up with ideas and trying to spend some time kind of working through them. Yeah. Thanks to everybody for hanging out. And um, I'll post everything up. I'll post up the, uh, the non-script we're working on today. And you can play around with it on your own device if you have one. The great thing is the only thing, okay, there's two non-specific things, but they're both inside of, uh, they're both these two functions right here. Everything else is just plain Lua, so you can load that onto a desktop. Um, you'll just need to figure out how to clock your arpeggiator, and you'll need to figure out how to have these notes trigger a note generating thing. Or maybe you want to do a video synthesizer, whatever it is. Um, but it'll just be, it's just these two functions that are non-specific. Everything else is, it's just Lua. Cool. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you again, maybe next week, maybe the week after. We will see. Um, but yeah.